Before we get started, I want to mention that in the place of this video, normally on Saturday, you would be seeing the Gaming with Ash segment here on Pop. But because of circumstance beyond his control, i.e. the weather, basically this will have to be cancelled for this week. Don't worry, Ashley will be returning next Saturday to bring us gaming news and more, actually. So we're going to uh, be getting that next Saturday. And I would think I would have already got some Halloween Horror Nights news with the announcement of the Purge Anarchy. Scare Zone coming to both Orlando and Hollywood. That has not happened yet. And Anarchy came out yesterday. And cheap plug, you can check out our review of Anarchy along with five other films that came out this week and the previous weeks in AJ's Movie Reviews, which was filmed yesterday, and it's currently available on the channel. And tomorrow we have a David Fincher Versus to uh, do it just as well. And Monday, of course, I'm going to be giving you guys Battleground, and then Tuesday we go into Raw. So, yeah, you're asking yourself, why are we talking NXT and SmackDown? Well, first off, this is a pay-per-view weekend. So because of that, I don't want to have to do what I did last time with Money in the Bank and do NXT and SmackDown after the pay-per-view was already over. So basically, I wasn't speculating on what would happen at the pay-per-view. I was just basically just giving you a recap. So to prevent this, I decided I was going to do NXT and SmackDown today. And as always, I watched SmackDown yesterday morning before we left for the Purge, Anarchy. And I just finished NXT, basically because I'm a procrastinator sometimes. That's just how it works. Now, also, I am reaping the benefits of these awesome bad boys right here. Look at these awesome stands that my mom picked up. I have a buttload of them, so yeah, we're going to be able to have a lot of better ways to uh, keep our videos having DVDs on them that just go out there. And plus, the view you have right now will continue, and I'll be able to take them with me, obviously, just like I did in 60 days when I head back to Orlando again. Yeah, it's crazy. It's only nine weeks until I go back to Orlando again. Oh, this time has gone by so fast, and it's been so awesome. So, that's not the only thing I have. I can't really show it to you because it's behind me, but I was uh, surprised with a brand new laptop. So, I have a new uh, Hewlett Packard laptop, and I will be taking that with me home this year in both September and uh, December. So, that's pretty awesome news. So, you guys and girls out here that have been watching Pop for a long time, you would probably know that this is what we call housekeeping, and this has nothing to do with wrestling whatsoever, and we're going to kick into our recap in just a moment. And by a moment, I mean now. So, let's talk about NXT for this past week. NXT started with a matchup between two tag teams, one of which we haven't seen together in quite a while since Enzo Amore broke his leg. And now he is finally back to action, has a different look, his facial hair is more, like, fleshed out, and Big Cass is now not a comedy wrestler anymore, he's actually a force to be reckoned with, that being having feuds with the RT State in English, and that brings us into this tag team match, because we have Enzo Amore and Big Cass Colin Cassidy taking on the VOD villains. Simon Gotch and the RT State in English. Now, I really like the VOD villains. I love the gimmick. I love the old-timey black-and-white grainy footage they do. Kudos to them for using that tone on the uh, camera to make it work. WWE marketing geniuses. So, it starts off with black-and-white, obviously, after the entrance of Enzo and Big Cass. And somebody who I really couldn't tell for sure... But it looked to me like it was Ryan Katz, the former GQ Money from XPW. And he had one of those old-timey bullhorn gimmicks. The ones that were kind of shaped like you would see at, like, a high school game or a college game back in, like, the 50s and 60s. And directors would use them as well before they actually had bullhorns back in the day, back in the golden age of cinema. And it brought out Simon Gotch and Aiden... Adrian, wow, God, Aiden English, I was right, long day, and uh, basically they had spotlights on each other, and they would pose, and then they'd come down to the ring, and uh, the crowd are really into the vaudevillains, so yeah, Full Sail, once again, turning heels into baby faces, but it doesn't matter, because they're playing it off as dastardly heels, like snidely whiplash-style heels, I mean, they might as well curl their mustaches, and I know they do, because they have awesome, awesome facial hair, not as cool as my friend Tim, but still, it's cool nonetheless. 
So this match is picked up, and it's very short. I'd like to have seen it a little bit longer. Actually, almost all of these matches were pretty short. Except for the main event, nothing went longer than five minutes. And as a matter of fact, most of the stuff didn't even go to five minutes. So these were all short matches, short TV matches, in a 42-minute edition of NXT, at least the version I watched. So we pick it up midway through, and Big Cass with the club to the back, and that's hit on Simon Gotch, and that's after he got a tag in from Enzo, and here are the music playing out the Legionnaire. So Marcus Louis and uh, Sylvester Lafort come out to the top of the ramp. That distraction allows a roll-up from behind from Gotch with the tights on Big Cass, and 1-2-3, the VOD villains win, and thus also propelling the... Eventual feud that I already talked about between the Legionnaires and Big Cass and Enzo Amore. And I know that's going to happen, and it's going to explode once it does. I want to see these uh, teams in a three-way, actually. A uh, three-way dance to determine a number one contendership for the NXT Tag Team Champions. The unstoppable Connor and Victor of the Ascension. And that would also bring them up to the main roster sooner rather than later. Which is, I'm thinking, what's going to happen. Another feud is continued, and that is the feud between C.J. Parker, still with his Franz Ferdinand version of the Bengals as his entrance theme, and he is facing off against Xavier Woods. So this match used to be on a lot of cards, actually. Before the days of the network, you saw this match a lot on NXT. And this feud is picked up again, and now C.J. Parker is being treated more as a threat, and that's exactly what he is at this point. So we pick it up midway through this match, a whip up, a whip up, well, long day, whip in by CJ and a tip up by Xavier Woods and ducks the clothesline, ducks CJ's back elbow, comes off with a satellite head scissors takeover on CJ, charges him with a forearm, whip in, and it's reversed, and he puts on the brakes to try to stop himself, but he goes way too far and ends up getting, like, nailing the throat on the bottom rope. So pretty much CJ takes advantage of this with a big clothesline and the mounted punches pounding away on the forehead of Xavier Woods. Whip in, ducks the clothesline, comes off the ropes, and Xavier starts his comeback. Two forearms, charges in, and backdrop lands on the ring apron, hits the high kick, and he nails the outside-in swinging DDT, the same one that Zima Ion uses on impact and he gets a two off of that so he goes up top for the flying body press CJ out of the way and he ducks his kick to finish it off O'Connor roll is countered and CJ grab him for the ropes but it doesn't matter he basically just uses his weight on top of Xavier Woods to get the three count so this feud does continue and it's alright I mean CJ Parker is somewhat slowly slowly growing on me Mojo Raleigh will never grow on me but I mean still I think that this actually works pretty well, this C.J. Parker uh, angry hippie storyline. And Xavier Woods is actually a perfect foil for him. I think it works pretty well, and they could have a nice little back and forth. And the people that did not get to watch NXT before it became on the network, they are able to get introduced to this feud. And it's new to them, but it's old to us. But still, it's also freshened up because C.J. Parker isn't playing the fake baby face anymore. He's playing the dastardly heel, so it works pretty well. So, Sami Zayn says in the back that Tyson Kidd is pretty much jealous of Natalia, and that's pretty much the reason why he's acting out the way he is, showing off his true colors for the first time in forever. And, speaking of Disney references, here comes Alexa Bliss, and she has her glitter blizzard, and she looks adorable as always, and she's facing off against the boss, Sasha Banks, who is not affiliated with the NXT Women's Champion Charlotte at all. The BFF split up completely for the last time last week on NXT, so this is Sasha by herself. This match was pretty good. Short, at, short as it may be, it still worked pretty well. And Sasha locks on a cravat, and Alexa Bliss breaks it with forearms to the midsection and catches the forearm as well. Whip in reverse and charges in. She gets the elbow up, and Sasha charges in, and Alexa gets the boot up, and she somersaults off, lands on her feet, and she nails a front drop kick on Sasha Banks. She gets caught with the backstabber, and it rolls through into a cross face, and Sasha Banks gets the win. So, building up Sasha Banks as the next contender for Charlotte, even though Summer Rae already has a title shot that is going to be on NXT this coming week. So yeah, that's going to be happening. And Tyson Kidd has to retort in the back. He basically says he's not jealous whatsoever. 
and basically a fire has been ignited under him to be the best he can be and show the world that he's as great as he thinks he is. So, Tyler Breeze basically says he's picking and choosing when he is going to cash in his golden opportunity at Adrian Neville's NXT Championship, and he's not going to be rushing out to do it because of his hand modeling injury. Obviously, he broke his finger, and I know he's back to action now, but when this was taped, obviously he wasn't, so we're going to wait a bit to get that. So we get our next match. Jason Jordan comes out, and really awesome uh, mess up from uh, WWE production or NXT production, depending on how you look at it, and the uh, Titan Tron for Jason Jordan says Jason Jordan, Jordan, so not Jordan, and his, uh, his Chiron says uh, Jordan, Jord as you would normally read Jordan, J-O-R-D-A-N, it's a D-O-N, not Jordan, and Jason Jordan basically says that the whereabouts of his tag team partner, Ty Dillinger, are unknown at this point. All he knows is he's injured, but the last time he was seen, he was partying with the Rosebuds, and that's why this match is happening, because he wants to get to the bottom of it in his own special way. And it's Jason Jordan taking on Adam Rose with the Rosebuds. Uh, Jason Jordan, I finally noticed for the first time. Okay, do you remember when the Primetime Players debuted in WWE and everyone thought Darren Young looked like Black John Cena? Okay. Jason Jordan, to me, looks like Darren Young. He's got the hair, obviously. But if he had Josh Brolin's face... I just noticed this for the first time, and yes, Josh Brolin and uh, Darren Young had a child, and it's Jason Jordan. That's pretty much how it worked. Obviously, that's not possible, but I'm using the old uh, late-night television show adage of what if they made it. So yes, that makes perfect sense to me. We pick it up midway through the match, and Jordan its a nice drop kick. It's a two off of that. Chin lock, and Rose fights himself out and gets the snap jabs, and a right hand drops him. Inverted atomic drop comes off the ropes with the Bobby Eaton style swinging neck breaker, and he charges in and he nails the back elbow, which looked really awesome. He got to the middle rope again and he hit a diving rana off the middle rope on Jason Jordan, and Choo Choo nails the Bronco Buster, and Party Foul finishes Jason Jordan, and that's the end. Just basically a a quick match to uh, ignite the crowd, because obviously the crowd in Full Sail love Adam Rose, and they should, because Adam Rose is awesome. And Jason Jordan actually showed me a lot in this match. He actually showed that he could be a viable singles competitor if the team, the what I like to call the white meat babyface team of Jason Jordan and Ty Dillinger, does not work out. I guess at this point you could call them the new American males. So, Kalisto is talking in the back, and basically, he gets interrupted by the black and white of the Vaude Villains, and it's funny, because Aiden English holds up a sign that says, where is your partner? And Kalisto's like, he, we split up, we're not going to be partners anymore. And he's like, well, how about you find a partner next week, I'll face you guys with a partner of my choosing, and we'll have a tag team match. So it looks like it's going to be Kalisto and Sin Cara against the Vaude Villains uh, this week on NXT, this coming week on NXT, since it's Saturday. We get our main event of the evening, and what a main event it was. The ongoing feud between Sami Zayn and Tyson Kidd does continue. And we pick it up midway through the match, right after the commercial break, obviously. And a chin lock is applied by Tyson, and a unique way to break out of it. He just backs him into the corner, and Kidd takes over with boots, vicious boots, into the midsection, booting down and beating down at Sami Zayn in the corner. S picks him up with a body slam and tags him up. Ties him up into the Tree of Woe. Charges in with the uh, hesitation drop kick, and he gets a reverse neck breaker for a two off of that. A chin lock again applied by Tyson, and Sammy punches his way out this time. Two right hands, and he comes off the ropes. He gets popped up in the air and a counter with a drop kick, and hits the nice Arabian press to the floor onto Tyson Kidd as Tyson Kidd powdered out to in order to uh, break momentum. So he gets rolled in, and Zayn goes up top for the flying body press, and he gets a two off of that, and he goes for the wrist lock. Vicious chop, and it gets countered into the drop toe hold into the bottom turnbuckle. So he nails a slingshot leg drop, and he gets a two off of that. Charges in, Zayn gets the elbow up, and he goes for the blue thunder, gets countered. Standing switch reversal, standing switch reversal again, countered again to Tyson Kidd with a release German suplex. One, two, Sami Zayn kicks out. He goes up top, and he kicks Zayn away to knock him off, so he is in position, and he nails the uh, 
perfect flying elbow drop, but he gets the counter there. Basically, Zayn countered the elbow drop. It looked awesome, but he got countered. And when Kid stands up, he eats the blue thunder bomb. One, two, and no. Tyson Kid again kicks out. So he charges into the kick. And a leaping kick from Tyson. He goes up top. He nails the flying guillotine. One, two, again, Sami Zayn kicks out. Obviously, they have each other scouted oh so well during the fact that we've had this feud for quite a while now. So he goes for the sharpshooter. Zayn kicks him off. And he goes for a jackknife cover, but it gets countered into the sharpshooter by Tyson. Tyson's got the sharpshooter on. Zayn crawling to the ropes, almost about to make it. And no, he gets dragged to the middle and he sits down with the most power and ferocity he possibly can, and finally Tyson Kidd makes no, 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 and no, he does not make him submit because he gets to the bottom rope just in the nick of time. So he goes up top to try to finish off mm, Sami Zayn once and for all, and he gets caught into the flatliner into the Koji Clutch, and that's all she wrote, folks. Uh, Sami Zayn wins this awesome main event to uh, finish off NXT. This coming week on NXT, we have Charlotte defending the NXT Women's Championship against Summer Rae. We have a tag team match involving the VOD villains against Kalisto and a partner of his choosing, which I believe is Sin Cara, and much more NXT action. What I'd recommend on this show, not much because they were short matches, but they were good for what they were. Uh, CJ Parker and Xavier Woods put on a, a longer match than... We've seen in a while. Alexa Bliss and Sasha Banks and Lexi got more time. Big Cass and Enzo against um, mm, the VOD villains should have had more time. And Adam Rose and J Jason Jordan was a short little semi-main to take you into uh, the main event, which was phenomenal with, si with a great matchup between Tyson Kidd and Sami Zayn. So yeah, that's what we have looking forward to next week. That was uh, NXT for this week. So let's talk about SmackDown, shall we? This is the go-home show for Battleground, which is coming at you tomorrow on pay-per-view if you want to pay for it or if you want to spend $10 and get it on the WWE Network, and I recommend you do just that. We pick it up with a matchup that is featuring four combatants involved in the 20-man over-the-top rope Intercontinental title Battle Royal tomorrow at Battleground, and that is a tag team featuring The Miz and Fandango taking on Sheamus and Dolph Ziggler. Three out of the four are currently hanging in my closet right now. Not people, I mean t-shirts, obviously. I'm not, a, I'm not a Sheamus fan. Never have been. So we pick it up midway through this match. Sheamus tosses in Fandango, and he gets the battering ram, the slingshot shoulder block, and gets a two off of that. Tagging a Dolph, he comes in. A 10 punch is turned into a 14 punch, and a standing drop kick on Fandango, one, two, and a kick out, tagging to Sheamus. And he slams him, comes off the ropes, the knee drop, gets a two off of that. Whip in, charges in, he gets the boot up, charges in, and Fondango gets caught for the over-the-shoulder power slam. He lands on the ring apron, and Fondango with a neck snap, he starts showboating, dancing, and shaking his hips, and of course he gets caught with the clubbing blows. But he gets stopped by a leaping kick, and he makes Sheamus eat the spinning heel kick off the ropes. You know, Tyler Breeze's beauty shot, thus more proving why they need to be a team. And repeated punches tag into The Miz, and The Miz comes in with boots in the corner, and then repeated punches in the corner. This is a new, more furious Miz than we're used to seeing. Gut shot whip in by Miz, and a knee into Sheamus, and he nails a boot off the ropes, gets a two off of that. Chin lock, and Sheamus picks him up on his back, and Miz kicks him in the knee, and the ground of DDT gets a two off of that. So he ties up the leg to try to stop any sort of chance of tagging out. Tagging to Fondango, he drops the knee, gets a one off of that. Right hands and jabs in the corner, and a nice European uppercut on Sheamus. And Sheamus punches Fondango for good measure, and a drop kick caught Sheamus off the ropes, gets a two off of that. He's dancing again, but he gets caught with white noise this time. Tagging to Miz, hot tagging to Dolph, he comes in, hooking clothesline, hooking clothesline, elbows Fondango off the ring apron. The charging splash in the corner, and the reverse neckbreaker goes for the name dropper. Miz goes to the floor, gets tossed in by Sheamus, and he eats the Rough Rider, and it's awesome because Ziggler throws up the LI after it's over, and nice shout out to Zack Ryder, and he goes for the neckbreaker, and it gets tossed off, 
And Miz with a reverse DDT to the knee, going for the old school expulsion. And he gets shoved off to the ropes. Dolph plants him, exclamation point, DDT. And Fondango makes a save before the three could be completed. Sheamus just ends his uh, participation in the match with a bro kicks and Fondango down to the canvas. Miz sends Sheamus to the floor. And Miz eats the zigzag, one, two, three, and a win for the United States champion Sheamus and Dolph Ziggler going into Battleground tomorrow. Really awesome back and forth tag team match. Very enjoyable match. I really like this match in every single way possible. And it worked really well for me. And there's a lot of realistic friendships in this match, obviously. Dolphin and The Miz, both from the Cleveland area, and that originally at least. And yeah, it's really awesome to see them being able to work with each other. The only person missing this match, this should if it was instead of Sheamus, if this match was Zack Ryder and Dolph Ziggler against The Miz and I would even say Kurt Hawkins at this point, even though that's not possible. That would have been the only way you could have done a, a better a friends versus friends match. But still, it worked really well. I really liked it for what it was, and it got a lot of uh, the crowd into the fact that any of the four could possibly win on Sunday, or tomorrow in this case, if this is Saturday. So we get our official opening, because obviously you guys know I don't watch it live, I don't watch it on DVR, I watch it on Sky Sports via YouTube, that's how it works. And thank you, Bolly Rules. So Ambrose comes out to start off the show. He says, Seth Rollins is smart. He says, look at the big brain on Seth. Someone's been watching Pulp Fiction recently. He says he couldn't beat down himself. He couldn't beat me down himself, so he had to enlist his goons, i.e. Randy Orton and Kane, to get the job done. He, of course, throws out his Max Katie yet again and says, is that all you got? And he calls Rollins out. And Rollins is on the Tron, of course. He's unable to compete because he tweaked his knee on Raw. He says, you're talented, but... Without me, you're simply nothing. You're just a lunatic destined for an asylum. So, you know, this match is a draw. It'd be a draw anywhere in the world, and it will be. And But honestly, I'd love to just curb stomp your face into oblivion right now, but because of my injury, I'm not cleared to wrestle. But you know what? You want to fight, I'm going to give you a fight, and you're going to face off against this man. And of course, Kane comes in the uh, picture, and that's how we get our main event set up for the evening. Dean Ambrose against Kane. So, yeah, that's going to be our opening. Uh, really good heat between the two, and I'm very excited to see what happens with the match. So, we get our next match. It is a um, Divas match. Alicia Fox thankfully dropped this, the Psycho gimmick, since AJ's back. She doesn't need to be Psycho anymore, but AJ's a babyface now, so she's more fun-loving instead of Psycho. And Alicia Fox taking on Eva Marie, and uh, this match has Nikki Bella as the referee, and basically Eva gets up in Nikki's face, and... Alicia Fox attacks her, and they put the boots to Nikki, and they parachute her, and if you're not knowing what a parachute is, back in grade school. You remember when you used to have gym class, or sometimes during the middle of the day, during recess, you used to have that big, awesome, multicolored parachute that used to lift up in the air for fun? Yeah, that's basically what they did to her. They picked her up, and they brought her back down. They picked her up, and they brought her back down. So yeah, that happened. That's why I said parachuted. And we get Goldust and Stardust again trying out weird each other and says Beyond the Door is a dimension of bizarre. So Goldust, of course, snaps at him and Stardust hisses back. So yeah, this is a who can out weird each other and uh, yeah, that continues. And no idea why neither one are involved in the Intercontinental Title Battle World given the fact that both of them are former Intercontinental Champions. Given the fact that, I don't know if they're really referencing the fact that Stardust is Cody. They're referencing the fact that Stardust is someone else. So yeah, they're not going to play that up. Cody is the reason that, that championship, in the way it looks right now, exists. That the original design of the Intercontinental title got brought back. So we pick our next match up, and oh what a doozy it was. It is Y2J Chris Jericho against Luke Harper of the Wyatt family. And of course, before the match starts, Bray Wyatt in his rocking chair has to give us some pearls of wisdom like he always does. He says, I remember everything about you, Chris. I remember how you said that you would always be there for them. I remember how you said you were going to go and save us all. I see right through you, man. You're a liar, a charlatan. You're the biggest hypocrite of them all, and you deserve everything that's coming for you. We've gone too far, Chris. There's no turning back now. When it is your fate hanging in the balance, it will not matter if you are one foot or a hundred feet off the ground, Chris. It'll just be too late. Don't worry about saving us. You should be more focused about saving yourself. And he cackles maniacally, and we start this match, 
and it is Luke Harper against Chris Jericho, and like I said, uh, this match is really, really good, and I was really excited when I was like, Jericho's going to work one of the Wyatt family, I was like, please let it be Luke Harper, and of course it is. But midway through the match, Harper gets a shirt ripped, so you get to see his hairy chest in all its glory, and uh, it's weird because he's still wearing the wife beater, and it is just torn, that's basically what it is. So we pick it up midway through. Jericho is caught in a chin lock by Harper, and Jericho elbows his way out. Two chops whip in and a follow-up clothesline. Whip in and a clothesline for good measure. The 10 punch, a big right hand, stops it right there, and a nice vertical suplex by Harper out of the corner gets a two off of that. Drops two elbows, locks on a chin lock, and Harper slam is countered into a small package from Jericho, one, two, and a kick out. A big right hand just drops Jericho like a bad habit, and he gets a two off of that, actually. So he nails the slingshot to the bottom rope, and he sends Jericho to the floor. He drops him throat first across the barricade, tosses him in, drops the elbow, one, two, and a kick out. The gator roll is, of course, transitioned into the chin lock, and he shoves him off to the ropes, ducks his head, and he gets kicked to the chest, a shoulder block, a flying forearm, and he gets tossed over, lands on the ring apron. Jericho goes up top and crowns Harper. Double leg, goes for the walls, and it gets countered. Ducks the clothesline. Harper nailed with the Insigiri kick to the back of the head. One, two, and a kick out. So a forearm whip in reverse and a cross body by Jericho. Picked up Michinoku driver by Luke Harper. One, two, and a kick out. So a whip is charged in with a boot up. He goes up top. Jericho with a flying body press gets a two off of that. Two knee strikes, whip in, and Jericho's face buster off the ropes gets shoved off, and Harper makes him eat the big boot. And nails the sit-out powerbomb right in the center of the ring. One, two, and Jericho kicks out. So he misses the charge, and this, of course, bumps Harper back. And he eats the lion salt. One, two, and Harper kicks out. So he goes for the code breaker, does Jericho. Harper shoves him off. The powerbomb is countered double leg into the walls. And Eric Rowan gets on the ring apron, causing the distraction. He eats the Jericho springboard drop kick, and he ducks Harper's discus lariat, and he gets rolled up one, two, three, and Chris Jericho wins this match by the skin of his teeth. After the match, Eric Rowan attacks, and the Usos make the save and brawl with Harper and Rowan as Bray heads for a higher ground, and that's how we end this match. So basically what this did was it set up two matches, and the progression of two matches going into the pay-per-view tomorrow. Uh, Bray Wyatt and Chris Jericho is going to be awesome. Really good match and very excited to see how it's going to work out. Obviously, I do remember the NXT one-off match they had, and it was great. And I really think that Bray has extremely improved since then. So it's going to be great to see that now they're equals. And it's not just an up-and-comer against Chris Jericho like it was back in the day. Now it's two equals going one-on-one, -on -one and it's going to uh, be an excellent match. And two out of three falls with the Usos and the Wyatts. The only thing I really uh, don't like about this match is the fact that my writing is going to probably break my wrist by the time the night's over tomorrow. With the two out of three falls match, you never know when something's going home when you're going to get, like, an, an upset. So it's kind of like, well, the first fall was kind of an upset, and then, okay, we'll go deeper into this. And then it's like, it's going to be a long, like, two pages of, like, just writing for that match. But it should be fun. So, of course, Jack Swagger and Zeb Coulter come out. Jack wearing his brand new t-shirt, of course, has your hand in a handprint where it should be saying, we the people. And he says that basically, Zeb and Jack are just sick and tired of Rusev and Lana. They're basically visitors to this country because they're allowed to be here. At Battleground, Jack Swagger is crush-proof. And, of course, the We the People comes out. Rusev and Lana come out to retort like they always do. Stupid Americans never learn. Rusev will crush Swagger and then all of America. So they chant back and forth. Swagger, of course, gets their USA chant started. You didn't really have to. The crowd was already chanting USA. And Rusev was chanting Russia, but it was called Russia was basically how he was, the way that his uh, dialect works. So that's how it sounded. So they both were waving the flags like, ferociously waving the flags, and you know what? Like I said before, if this does not have an end game of a USA versus Russia flag match at SummerSlam, I don't know why it wouldn't be at this point. It's the only direction to go. And at this rate right now, that doesn't make Swagger pin Rusev or submit Rusev, and that's a way to get Swagger to beat Rusev in the end game of this feud. And that's exactly what I would do. So Rusev has still never been pinned, in his new run in WWE, and he's never submitted his new run in WWE, but Drax Swagger can still win at SummerSlam in a flag match, because all he has to do is capture the flag, so it works perfect. 
I think it's the right direction to go, and I think it's the direction WWE Creative is going to take it. Get our next match, also featuring two combatants in the Intercontinental Title Battle Royal. This being the, I really uh, care about this match, but no one really should because we've seen it 4,000 times between Alberto Del Rio and Kofi Kingston. And we pick it up midway through. Kofi with a springboard chop and, uh, you know, the same move that um, Sonata uses as a setup to the finish. And two double chops and the drop kick, leaping clothesline. You know how Kofi's offense works. Boom, drop, connects, goes for the trouble in paradise. Del Rio goes to the floor to stop it. And the give chase. And Kofi slides back under the bottom rope. And, of course, he eats the GSK. He gets a two off of that. And the cross arm breaker is countered into an awkward counter into the SOS, which finally uh, gets a two off of that because Del Rio grabs the bottom rope. A neck snap by Del Rio goes up top. And he gets crotch. Kofi climbs up, goes for a superplex, gets punched up. He ties him up in the corner. Basically what happens is he knocks him off the top rope and he lands tied up in the corner and Del Rio finishes him with the Warriors way, the double boot stomp. And that's the three count. So Del Rio wins and uh, that's just, it was a match. It was a match we've seen a million times. So yeah, okay, match between these two. We've seen better, we've seen worse. So it's kind of in the middle. Neither one has a chance to win on Sunday, but I will say that Kofi's probably going to have an awesome near elimination like he always does every single time. So, Fandango has a, uh, a promo in the back, and he's talking to Layla and Summer Rae, and he says he wants to wipe the slate clean. He's like, ladies love jewelry, obviously, once I win on Sunday, I'll have this really nice gold championship around my waist. And you can have your arms around these guns right here, uh... I really like the skeezy Fandango character that was started on Total Divas. I think it works really well. And obviously, he's like the ultimate ladies' man that doesn't have any ladies. So he's, in essence, he is basically Tim Meadows' ladies' man. Mixed up with uh, the Butabi brothers from A Night at the Roxbury. So he's all sorts of SNL throwing the one. I love Fandango. And I'm telling you right now, I really hope this leads to something, and I think that it will. I still hold to my claim that Fondango will be a singles champion before next year is over. Yeah, I'm giving myself a little bit more time here. So, basically, Summer and Layla just mock him. Bo Dallas shows up awesomely and says, You know what? If you love someone, you let them go. And if they come back, then they were yours. And if not, then they never were. And it's like, you'll be dancing with another sooner than rather than later. He calls him, uh, he says he has smooth, you'll be fine with your smooth moves and your fancy pants. Another girl will dance in your life if you only just believe. So yeah, that was awesome. Really great, as always. Pick up our next match. It is uh, the Frenemies, uh, Paige and your Divas champion, AJ Lee, taking on uh, Summer Rae and Layla. The only person I don't like in this match is Layla, to be honest. I think every, everyone else is nice to look at. Layla's okay, but yeah, she wouldn't be my fourth in this match. Obviously. So AJ tags herself in after Paige really basically completely takes care of business. And when AJ tags herself in, Summer Rae gets caught in the Black Widow, and that's the end. So yeah, I'd like to see this going a lot longer. This could have in NXT this match would have went forever long. So after the match is over, the frenemies shake hands and that's the end. and then they hug. So yeah. Really on rocky ground between AJ and Paige. So, yeah, that was uh, what we're going to get. And Summer and Layla apparently are just going to team up now. I guess, like I said, they are they were doing the the old PMS thing, the old Pretty Mean Sisters thing with Dolph Ziggler on Raw Monday night. But now it looks like they're just going to uh, be just women gunning for everyone. I don't know if they're going to be man-haters or anything like that. I doubt it, but who knows? We'll see what happens. So, Rollins is talking to Kane in the locker room and basically saying that he needs to leave a little life left in Ambrose so he can personally finish the job on Sunday. And Kane basically just warns him, do not, do not, I'm hungry, sorry, do not cash in because if you do, it's not going to be in your favor. So yeah, that's tension between Kane and uh, Seth Rollins for this Sunday. We get our main event is Dean Ambrose against Kane. Uh, it was okay for what it was. Tornado DDT by Ambrose, and when Kane gets up, snap jabs. Kane stops him with a knee and a knee and repeated shots. He nails the front drop kick because, of course, Kane's tied in the ropes. The repeated shots while he's tied up in the ropes, and Kane would nail with the front drop kick. And a knee in the ropes. He ties him up again, goes up top. A missile drop kick, and that does connect. 
pushes him off to the ropes, and of course, the jawbreaker Larry just countered with a goozle, and Kane gets low bridge, he goes over the top rope to the floor, Ambrose makes him eat the tope, Kane tosses Ambrose into the steel steps, and he sets the steps up, going for the tombstone on the steps, and he gets countered, and Kane gets posted, and Rollins with the case from behind, and calling for the DQ, he tosses him in, Kane and Seth bring the steps in the ring, and Rollins gets attacked with a double leg by Ambrose, and he punches away, and Kane stops him, and they choke slam Ambrose. Kane puts Ambrose on the steps, and Rollins curb stomps him, and Rollins and Kane celebrate standing on the steps with Rollins uh, holding the case high in the air, and that's how we go home on uh, the last edition of uh, SmackDown before uh, the pay-per-view tomorrow. So what would I recommend on this show? I definitely would recommend the tag team match, uh, the opening, the second match on the show. I believe it was the second, the first actual match on the show. It was after the opening segment, which was the second on here. I don't know why they flip flop on Sky Sports. It's just how it works, I guess. So yeah, I definitely recommend Miz and Fandango against Dolph and Sheamus, unless you're not a fan of those two, and then probably not, or any of the those four in general, those two teams, I guess you would say. Luke Harper and Chris Jericho, awesome. Awesome stuff. Uh, Kofi and Del Rio, we've seen it before, but still good. Paige and AJ against Summer and Layla, you know, it was okay for what it was. Could have been a little longer. Ambrose and Kane, just business as usual. And uh, that was SmackDown. So what we got right now is let's talk about Battleground real quick before we get off here. And uh, the next time you see me on camera is going to be uh, Monday for Battlegrounds pay-per-view uh, recap. So what do we got right now? We're looking at a card which is going to be starting off with a kickoff match. The kickoff match will feature the battle of the former Funkadactyls, Naomi versus Cameron. There's a lot more of an upside for Naomi, and to be honest, I would think that Cameron uh, may be... I see Naomi will be multiple champion in two years. I don't think Cameron will have a job in two years, to be honest, and that's nothing against her. I just think that she could be collateral damage for another uh, set of firing somewhere down the line after this feud is over, because there's really nothing you can do with her. That being said, I think Cameron wins with nefarious means on Sunday to propel them to another match on SummerSlam's card, which I think is probably what's going to happen. Rusev and Swagger, um, I would say right now that you'd think Rusev's going to win without any doubt. I think Swagger wins by disqualification when Rusev won't break the gamble clutch, the accolade. I think that may end up being the case. Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins, you know what? At this point, to build into another show, to build into another pay-per-view, I think they go to a no contest. I think they fight so hard and so furiously that the referee just tosses it out and they go to a no contest. The Usos and the Wyatts for the WWE Tag Team Championships, I really think that the Wyatts are going to win this finally, and they should win this. And Usos and the Wyatts have an awesome match at SummerSlam to uh, culminate this feud between the two teams. You know, honestly, I could see a ladder match between these two teams. I think it would work pretty well. Uh, some sort of stipulation match. Maybe a double tables match, potentially. I think that would be pretty awesome, but they haven't utilized tables into the feud yet. I think that might be what this match is for, to set up that stipulation match we're going to get at SummerSlam with uh, the wife defending against the Usos. Bray Wyatt and Chris Jericho. Uh, the only way that Jericho's going to win this is if uh, they're... Actually, no, I don't really think Jericho has a chance to win this. I think Bray Wyatt wins this. I think Jericho wins at SummerSlam, and I think Bray wins the feud at Night of Champions to uh, end it completely. And all three matches, Bray's going to get put over, regardless if he wins or loses. That's the best way to put it. Intercontinental Title Battle Royal. At this point right now, I'm honestly seeing only a few potential winners of this match. And the winners that I'm seeing at this point are Dolph Ziggler, who probably won't win. Cesaro, who probably won't win because of the fact that they're pushing him away from Heyman, leading to his eventual monster babyface run he's going to get soon, after the Roman Reigns stuff is over. Bo Dallas, which really could win. Sheamus definitely could win to set up the unification of the U.S. and Intercontinental Championships. What I'm thinking right now is Bo Dallas does win this, and the only other person I could think might win is Sheamus to... Uh, Put the two titles together, but then again, with so many superstars on the roster and two shows, so much programming, you really need two championships. So yeah, I think that Bo Dallas wins this and continues to help people Bo leave in his undefeated streak. So yeah, that's what we have. And uh, Paige and AJ for the Divas Championship should be a great match. I think AJ wins. I think AJ wins by pinfall, actually. I don't think she taps Paige out. I think uh, she wins by pinfall. She wins with Shining Wizard. So yeah, what what could happen is she hits, she goes for the page turner, AJ counters, rolls her up, and hits the Shining Wizard on that. So yeah, I think that actually might be your finish there, so that would work pretty well for me. 
So that's what we have, and of course, we're not forgetting the main event, which is the Fatal 4-Way for the WWE Championship, which is now just one title because it gave the World Championship to Ric Flair on Raw Monday night, and that is John Cena, Kane, Randy Orton, and Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns can't win this because it's too soon, and I think if Roman Reigns is going to win the World Championship, I think it happens at WrestleMania against Brock Lesnar, and after he beats Brock Lesnar, what happens is Rollins comes in and cashes in on him. I think that would be a great way to do things and really get a lot of heat, a lot more heat on Seth Rollins than he already has already. But that just depends on if they want to stretch it out that long. Uh, if Roman Reigns wins tonight or wins tomorrow night, I think that they could do that cash-in with Seth Rollins winning, and then Rollins and Ambrose be for the WWE Championship at SummerSlam. That'd be interesting. And we still do John Cena and Brock Lesnar. We don't have to have the title on the line, so that'd be really interesting. But then again, since Austin Aries is option C in TNA, I think the new option for WWE for the authority in getting the championship back away from John Cena, away from anyone else, is Brock Lesnar. So Lesnar's going to come in, and that's going to be what we lead to there. So yeah, that's what we had here on the show tonight. Oh, easily, John Cena wins. There's no doubt in my mind, John Cena wins. No. And it'd be interesting to see, like I said, with the Bo Dallas thing, going back to it. Bo Dallas wins, and Wade Barrett's going to be there to present the championship to the winner. What I really would like at this point is if Barrett would just, like, come out. I know he's, he's injured. He's legitimately, legitimately injured. But there's two things that happen. One will happen. One would happen in a fantasy world if Barrett wasn't really hurt. Or his injury makes him able to wrestle sooner rather than later. I would say that Barrett is about ready to hand the championship over to Bo Dallas. He's excited and he says he's afraid he's got some bad news. I'm not hurt and you're going to fight me now. So we get our Bo Dallas Wade Barrett feud. And I think that would happen and Barrett would be the babyface going into this, so he'd be, he wouldn't be good news, Barrett. He'd be bad news, Barrett, delivering bad news to heels. So, yeah, that's what I would see out of that. Obviously, that won't happen, but Bo Dallas can continuously make fun of Barrett because Barrett can't do anything about it because he's hurt. So, when Barrett does return, he has a perfectly feud built in with Bo Dallas, and eventually, I still want Wade Barrett to win the World Heavyweight Championship. So, hopefully, the WWE Championship is in Barrett's future. I hope it is eventually. So that's what we got for NXT and SmackDown. So, yeah, that's what I'd recommend on the shows. Plural. And uh, tomorrow is Battleground. And hopefully you guys and girls out there will enjoy that. Uh, those are my predictions for Battleground. Obviously, new versus coming up tomorrow. That is going to be David Fincher related. And we have our Raw recap, of course, coming up on Monday. And we also... Monday night, which of course will be our Tuesday video, and Wednesday, Wednesday, TNA Impact first ever taping from the Grand Ballroom in New York City. I will be recapping that on Wednesday, and by Thursday, we'll probably have a Halloween Horror Nights announcement we can talk about, and Thursday, of course, AJ and myself are watching Lucy. Friday, of course, AJ's movie reviews will be Hercules, Lucy, and a few other movies as well. So that's still to come. And Brand New Versus coming out next week as well. We're going to talk about Dumb Gym Rats. So yeah, that's your uh, cryptic comment for that one. And that's going to finish the month of July into August. Cannot believe it's only nine weeks till I'm home again. So in the meantime, if you haven't yet, go to Facebook and like our Facebook fan page. It is Sir Owen Disney Pop. If you'd like to follow me on Twitter, it's at Sir Owen Disney. If you'd like to friend me on Facebook, you're more than welcome to. It's Owen Disney. Let me know you're a fan. Uh, let me know because I get these... Invite sometime. I don't know if you guys are fans or if it's just people. I Just let me know. Like, Send me a little message, a little like instant message on Facebook Messenger and say, Hey, Owen, I like what you're doing. Or I don't. I like what AJ's doing. I like what Ashley's doing. Or where's Will and Ben? And we'll talk about that. And once again, I'll thank you for your patronage like I do every single time. So you can do that on Facebook. Or finally, if you'd like to become a podcast yourself, if you would like to send me video you'd like to put on this channel, if you have ideas for verses, if you would like to ask me questions that I can't answer on here for good reason, if you'd like to talk wrestling with me, Disney, Universal, Halloween Horror Nights, any of the above, or anything not listed, if you'd like to just pick my brain, you're more than welcome to do that. Send me an email, surrowanddisney at gmail.com. In the meantime, I want to thank you guys and girls out there for watching, and until tomorrow, boys and girls, that's all i got to say about that.